Hey Popcorn Kid Crew, how's everybody doing this evening? You know what guys, I have a wonderful story to share with you. This is such a beautiful story. And the story is about two beautiful daughters and the daughters of a wonderful father. It's quite an adventure. Have you ever heard of Mufero's beautiful daughters? This is a beautiful African tale, and it's by John Steptoe. This book has won so many awards. It's won the Caldecott Award, which means it's a major book. How's everybody doing? Well, are you ready to get started? You know what we have to do before Miss V's crew gets started. We have to say, I am the greatest. Did you say it? Go on and say it. Say, I am the greatest. Tell yourself that every single day. You know I'm going to be checking on you. Okay, are you guys ready? This is such a good book. I think you're going to love it. It's a beautiful story. Mufero's Beautiful Daughters by John Steptoe. A long time ago, in a certain place in Africa, a small village lay across a river and half a day's journey from a city where a great king lived. A man named Mufaro in this village with his two daughters, who were called Manyara and Nyasha. Everyone agreed that Manyara and Nyasha were very beautiful. Manyara was almost in a bad temper. She teased her sister whenever their father's back was turned. And she had been heard to say, Someday, Nyasha, I will be a queen, and you will be a servant in my household. If that should come to pass, Nyasha responded, I will be pleased to serve you. But why do you say such things? You are clever and strong and beautiful. Why are you so unhappy? Because everyone talks about how kind you are and they praise everything you do, Manyara replied. I am certain that father loves you best. But when I am queen, everyone will know that your silly kindness his only weakness. Nyasha was sad that Manyara felt this way, but she ignored her sister's words and went about her chores. Nyasha kept a small plot of land on which she grew millet, sunflower seeds, and yams and vegetables. She always sang as she worked and some said it was her singing that made her crops grow more bountiful than anyone else. Look at these beautiful illustrations. Aren't they lovely, guys? One day, Nyasha noticed a small garden snake resting beneath a yam vine. Good day, little Nyoka, she called him. You are welcomed here. You will keep away any creatures who might spoil my vegetables. She bent forward and gave the little snake a loving pat on the head and then returned to her work. From that day on, Nayoki was always at Nyasha's side when she tended to her garden. It was said that she sang all the more sweetly when he was there. Garden snake right there. She's very gentle with him, isn't she? Mufaro knew nothing of how Manyara treated Nyasha. Nyasha was too considerate of her father's feelings to complain. And Manyara was always careful to behave herself when Mufara was around. 
Early one morning, a messenger from the city arrived. The great king wanted a wife. The most worthy and beautiful daughters in the land are invited to appear before the king, and he will choose one to become queen. The messenger proclaimed, Mufaro called Manyara and Nyasha to him. It would be a great honor to have one of you chosen, he said. Prepare yourselves to journey to the city. I will call all of our friends to make a wedding party. We leave tomorrow as the sun rises. Wow. But Father, Manyara said sweetly, it would be painful for either of us to leave you. Even to be a wife to the king. I know Nyasha would grieve to death if she were to be parted from you. I am strong. Send me to the city and let poor Nyasha be happy here with you. Mufara beamed with pride. The king has asked for the most worthy and the most beautiful. No, Manyara, I cannot send you alone. Only a king can choose between two such worthy daughters. Both of you must go. That night when everyone was asleep, Manyara stole quietly out of the village. She had never been in the forest at night before and she was frightened. But her greed to be the first to appear before the king drove her on. In a hurry, she almost stumbled over a small boy who suddenly appeared standing in the path. Please, said the boy, I am hungry. Will you give me something to eat? I have brought only enough for myself, Manyara replied. But please, said the boy, I'm so very hungry. Out of my way, boy. Tomorrow I will become your queen. How dare you stand in my path? Hmm. I don't know, guys. After traveling for what seemed to be a great distance, Manyara came to a small clearing. There, silhouetted against the moonlight, was an old woman seated on a large stone. The woman spoke. I will give you some advice, Manyara. Soon after you pass the place where the two paths cross, you will see a grove of trees. They will laugh at you. You must not laugh in return. Later, you will meet a man with his head under his arm. You must be polite to him. How dare you know my name? And how dare you advise your future queen? Stand aside, you ugly old woman. Manyara scolded and then rushed on her way without looking back. Have you guys heard this story before? Are you enjoying it? Come on, let's continue. Let's see what's going to happen. Just as the old woman had foretold, Manyara came to a grove of trees, and they did indeed seem to be laughing at her. I must be calm, Manyara thought. I will not be frightened. She looked up at the trees and laughed out loud. I laugh at you, trees, she shouted. And then she hurried on. Uh oh. It was not yet dawn when Manyara heard the sound of rushing water. The river must be ahead, she thought. The great city just beyond the other side. But there on the rise, she saw a man holding his head under his arm. Manyara ran past without speaking. A queen acknowledges only those who please her, she said to herself. 
I will be queen. I will be queen, she chanted as she hurried on towards the city. And Yara is forgetting what she was told to do. Let's see what happens. Nyasha woke at the first light of dawn. As she put on her finest garments, she thought how her life might be changed forever beyond the state. I'd much prefer to live here, she admitted to herself. I'd hate to leave this village and never see my father or sing to little Naoki again. Her thoughts were interrupted by a loud shout and a commotion from a wedding party assembled outside. Minyara was missing. Everyone hustled about and searching and calling for her. When they found her footprints on the path, they led to the city and they decided to go on as planned. As the wedding party moved through the forest, brightly plumed birds darted about in the cool green shadows beneath the trees. Though anxious about her sister, Nyasha was soon filled with excitement about all there was to see. There, deep in the forest, when she saw the small boy standing by the side of the path, you must be hungry, she said, and handed him a yam she had brought for her lunch. The boy smiled and disappeared as quietly as he had come. Later, as they were approaching the place where the two paths crossed, the old woman appeared and silently pointed to the way to the city. Nyasha thanked her and gave her a small pouch filled with sunflower seeds. The sun was high in the sky when the party came to the grove of towering trees. Their uppermost branches seemed to bow down to Nyasha as she passed beneath them. At last, someone announced that they were near their destination. The illustrations are wonderful. This book, do you agree? They're wonderful. Nyasha ran ahead and topped to the rise before the others could catch up with her. She stood transfixed at her first sight of the city. Oh, my father, she called. A great spirit must stand guard here. Just look at what lies before us. I never in all my life dreamed there could be anything more beautiful. see the city. They're slowly approaching the city. Arm in arm, Nyasha and her father descended the hill, crossed the river, and approached the city gate. Just as they entered through the great doors, the air was rent by piercing cries, and Manyara wildly ran out of a chamber at the center of the enclosure. When she saw Naisha, she fell upon her sobbing. Do not go to the king, my sister. Oh, please, father, do not let her go, she cried hysterically. There's a great monster there, a snake with five heads. He said that he knew all of my faults and I displeased him. He would have swallowed me alive if I had not run. Oh, my sister, please do not go inside of that place. It frightened Ayasha to see her sister so upset. But leaving her father to comfort Manyar, she bravely made her way to the chamber and opened the door.
On the seat of the great chief's stood stool lay the little garden snake. Naisha laughed with relief and joy. My little friend, she exclaimed, it's such a pleasure to see you. But why are you here? I am the king, Naoki replied. And there before Nyasha's eyes, the garden snake changed his shape. Oh, he's the king, guys. I am the king. I am also the hungry boy with whom you shared a yam in the forest and the old woman to whom you made a gift of sunflower seeds. But you know me best as Nyoka because I have been all of these things. I know you to be the most worthy and the most beautiful daughter in the land. It would make me very happy if you would be my wife. Wow. It's beautiful. And so it was that. A long time ago, Nyasha agreed to be married. The king's mother and his sisters took Nyasha to their house and the wedding preparations began. The best weavers in the land laid out their finest cloth for the wedding garments. Villagers from all around were invited to the celebration and a great feast was held. Nyasha prepared the bread for the wedding feast from millet that had been brought from her village. Mufero proclaimed to all who would hear him that he was the happiest father in the land. For he was blessed with two beautiful and worthy daughters, Nyasha the queen and Manyara, a servant in the queen's household. The end. You know, you guys, whenever I read this story or hear this story, I think about how we entertain different people and even different situations that we never know will affect us later. Be wise with how you treat people. And I often think, be kind. And I often think I need to treat people the way I want to be treated. That's a golden rule for all of us. So let's always practice being kind, being loving, and sharing. You never know who you're entertaining. And you know what, you all? I'm going to share something with you. My grandmother used to tell me, you never know who's going to give you your last glass of water. If you don't know what that means, kids, please ask your parents or ask somebody who loves you what that means. Because you don't know. You guys, you are the greatest. Miss V loves you. I send you peace. I send you love. Send you a kiss, and I'll see you soon.